frivolous, outlandish. Jack Smith is coming out swinging against a number of Donald Trump's recent motions to dismiss the classified documents case entirely. One of the ex-presidents attempts is to claim immunity in this case. Smith's team says that is, quote, so wholly without merit that it is difficult to understand it except as part of a strategic effort for delay. Smith argues that Trump's immunity argument is even more far-fetched than in the federal election interference case, since his mishandling of classified material happened after he left office. Prosecutors also dismantled the ex-president's argument that the hundreds of documents he wrongfully retained were personal records. They write this, quote, Trump did not create them. They do not reflect his personal thoughts. They came into his possession only through his official duties and except for one charge document, bear classification markings. They have no resemblance to diaries. That was in reference to the ex-president comparing his actions to President Reagan retaining his diaries after leaving office. Shortly after Jack Smith's team submitted their filings, the judge overseeing the case, Aileen Cannon, scheduled a hearing for next Thursday. We will be watching. Joining our conversation, former U.S. Attorney, former Deputy Assistant Attorney General Harry Lippman is here, and former Acting Assistant Attorney General for National Security at the Justice Department and MSNBC legal analyst Mary McCord is here. Rick is still with me at the table. Um, Mary, let me ask you, um, what do we... Jack Smith's paper tells us most of what non-lawyer, non-DOJ person knows about him. And from Jack Smith's paper and filings, he seems to be calling BS on all of Trump's moves and arguments. Is that a fair read? I think, I think in legal terms, that's what he's doing. He's just uh, <laughs> using different words, right? D different verbiage. And it, and it, I mean, it had to be said. I mean, some of these motions, the, the motion to dismiss based on presidential immunity is based on an argument that Mr. Trump, while he was president, designated all of these classified documents as personal, and therefore that was within the scope of his official acts that he should have immunity for. So you don't even have to get to the question, says Jack Smith, of whether a president, a former president, is ever immune from criminal prosecution for official acts, because it's ludicrous to think that what he's charged with here was part of his official acts. He's charged with retaining classified information, not classified information, national defense information, which most classified information falls within, retaining that when he was unauthorized to have it after he was president and refusing to return it. He's also, of course, charged with obstruction of justice and things like that. Um, so this notion that that he did anything relevant to this case while he's was president, that's what Jack Smith is is calling BS on. He's saying that is so frivolous that if this court denies the motion as it should, it should not pause things and allow uh, the former president to appeal. Remember in the Jack Smith case in, in DC, the January 6th related case, when Judge Chutkin denied his motion for presidential immunity, she paused the entire case in order for him to, to appeal. Jack Smith says here, because this would be so frivolous, an appeal would be so frivolous, you don't have to pause the case. So he's going all in on that. And he, he makes similar arguments on the motion to dismiss on the grounds, again, that the Presidential Records Act, uh, under that act, the president designated things personal, and therefore he can't be charged with having personal documents. And as the as Jack Smith, through his lawyers, says, I think quite persuasively, these are, class, these are classified documents that were prepared for your duties while you were president in exercising your constitutional and statutory, statutory duties. They are not personal. They could not be personal. And criminal statutes that apply to the mishandling of national defense information are utterly in, unaffected and unaffected related to a civil regime that ensures that the, the archivist can keep presidential records for historical purposes. Harry, let me read you a little bit more from this calling BS filing, <laughs> which is what I'll shorthand it around here. Um, <laughs> under Trump's view, a president could direct the special forces to murder his principal political opponent. He could accept a bribe in exchange for steering a lucrative government contract to the bribe payer. And he could sell classified information to an adversary. And as long as he was not impeached by the House and convicted by the Senate, he could act with impunity. I mean, all this talk of autocracies is, is, is so close to the surface in my brain. But 
the work that he did in pushing and straining and pressing and perverting the rule of law seems to be the, the, the farthest he got. And it, it seems that almost everything about whether we remain a nation of laws is at stake in the Supreme Court hearing any immunity claim from Donald Trump. That's a total fact, but Smith is even taking it a step further. As you say, he's come out swinging and the gloves are off. He's begun to use the D word, delay. It's so frivolous that it could only be a transparent effort to try to delay. We've got the motion that Mary just summarized. And remember, I just want to put a uh, marker in there about the possibility that she deny the motion, but authorize a uh, an, an interlocutory appeal. And then we have that whole trip up and down. He's brought, well, he's brought 12 motions, as has Nada. They've asked for hearings in 10 of them. And she has granted today for next week hearing on two of them, the one that Mary just summarized, and also a vagueness claim in which he says because he had maybe this other kind of security clearance, he can't even understand what the charges are. And for both, Smith very aptly says his the whole premise of his motions really don't matter at all legally, even if it were right he'd have no right to the relief he sought. Even if it were right about immunity, he did, took these actions afterwards. So any other, most other judges would read these and deny them on the papers. Who knows why these two have caught her eye. She's now gonna have a hearing. They may push forward for an evidentiary hearing. As always, there are two simultaneous games going on with Trump, especially in Margo Lago, the game to win dubious rulings. Here they are more than dubious, they're frivolous, and the game to get delay. And every hearing, every evidentiary hearing in particular is just one more kicking of the can down the road. I understand why Trump does this because delaying has worked. It's worked in every attempt to, you know, he's he's sort of Houdini, every effort to hold him accountable, he mm. gets out of it. I don't understand why any judge appointed by any president of any party allows it. It, it makes a mockery. Well, I, I would ask uh, uh, Mary and Harry about this, I mean, because obviously ever since he's ever been on trial for anything, his whole motive is to delay it. Correct. To use the process to make sure that it's delayed so justice is denied. Correct. And so I think to outside observers who are not lawyers, it does look like he's using that successfully. process. Successfully. Successfully. And, and, the, and it seems like that's a problem with the legal system that it can be manipulated like that, particularly with frivolous claims. I, I would lo I'd love to hear if there's some kind of legal <laughs> response to that to just kind of dismiss it outright. Mary. Yes, yeah, so I think this does expose what normally I think um, the procedures and the rules are des designed to make sure that people charged with crimes get due process, right? They have ample attorney, uh, ample opportunity to prepare for trial. They have ample at access to the evidence that will be used against them, time to amass their own evidence, ample time to file motions, legal motions. Uh, in the case of immunity, which is very similar to sort of double jeopardy, the idea is you, you shouldn't be forced to sit through a t trial at all, and that's usually to protect a defendant, and that's why you can take an appeal and stay the whole trial when you take an appeal. So these things are steeped in sort of the, the need uh, under our system, our constitutional system, to ensure that de criminal defendants have fair trials, have due process, et cetera. But I think what this has exposed is that particularly when, pers when someone like Mr. Trump can afford or his PACs can afford to pay for armies of lawyers, they can really manipulate um, these systems, kind of like people would say that some people manipulate our tax code, right, to their benefit and to delay. And unless you have judges that are really willing to put a stop to it, things like expediting the way that the D.C. Circuit expedited its appeal and, and ruled quickly. Um, those are the only real ways to combat that. And we've seen with the Supreme Court taking almost two weeks to even decide if it was going to take the immunity case and having passed over the opportunity to having been able to, to have been taken it earlier in December 
straight from the district court, leapfrogging the D.C. Circuit, the Supreme Court has injected even more delay. And mm -hmm. even though they expedited somewhat, they didn't expedite anywhere nearly as fast as they ex expedited the 14th Amendment Section 3 disqualification case. So if you're going to avoid that delay, you've got to have judges that are willing to to just prevent it and to set schedules that are that ensure fairness to the defendant, but also fairness to the public, because here there's an important public interest.